One cold Friday morning, Tony took his daughter, Mia, into the living room and did something rather surprising with her. However, he didn't know there was a camera there. When his wife, Laura, checked the camera at night, she couldn't believe her eyes. She broke down in tears. When this video of Tony and his daughter went viral, people reacted to it in different ways. Many people cried, some were shocked. And others were speechless. This made me cry. I will never watch it again. Someone in the comments section wrote. The most surprising thing is that this story happened just. After a frightening incident that almost tore Mia's parents apart. A few weeks before Tony was caught. Doing something with his daughter. He returned from work earlier than usual. And walked straight into Laura's room. Darling, you're home early, Laura greeted. But she was met with a cold stare. She had never seen such a look in Tony's eyes. And it scared her to the core. Tony looked like a real mess. He didn't have his tie on. And he never took it off until he got home. His eyes were bloodshot as if he had been crying the whole day. Worse still, he smelled of alcohol. Laura knew the husband she married would never drink and drive. So something was wrong. Really wrong. Why? Tony finally said. Breaking his silence. Laura, why did you do that? He asked again, and this time his voice trembled with emotion. Laura was confused. She approached Tony and tried to wrap her hands around his neck. But he stopped her. Laura was shocked. Tony had never treated her this way. However, rather than telling her what the problem was, Tony went into Mia's room where she was sleeping in her crib. You are mine. I love you so much. I can't do without you. He told the sleeping Todd as tears streamed down his eyes. Laura tried to get Tony to open up. But he remained mute. He didn't eat his dinner. And he went to bed earlier than usual. Throughout the night. He kept tossing on the bed. He was struggling to sleep. Laura couldn't sleep either. Tony eventually managed to doze off for a few minutes. Only to suddenly wake up screaming, Mia's name. Okay, that was it. Laura snapped. She was done with the waiting game. Tony would have to tell her what the problem was now. Irritated, she woke Tony up. You've been acting out of place since you returned from work. Yet you won't say anything. It's driving me crazy, she said angrily. What she heard next made her freeze. Tony sat on the bed. Ran his fingers through his hair, and screamed. Charles came to my office yesterday. He said Mia isn't mine, but his. Charles. Laura stammered. Charles was Laura's first love and longtime boyfriend. No, no. Charles is lying. I need you to trust me. Laura said in a quivering voice. I really want to, but help me understand, he replied. Then he asked for Laura's phone. She handed the phone over to him. And Tony checked her call logs. Which revealed that for the past seven days. She had received about ten calls from Charles. And she had also called him half a dozen times. You've been talking to him behind my back. Is everything he said true? Tony suppressed a scream as he stared. At the woman he loved with all his heart. Why were you talking to him again and why didn't you tell me? We never hide anything from each other, Tony said calmly. I know you're fighting for promotion at work. And you need to be in a good state of mind. I didn't want to disturb you. I would never do anything to hurt you, she said. Then, she went ahead to tell Tony how Charles had suddenly started calling her in the past few days, begging her to come back into his life. She had only returned his calls to ask him to stay away from her as she was happily married. While she was explaining all this, Tony suddenly jumped out of bed, opened his wardrobe, and brought out a bag he had taken to work the previous day. 
He opened it and brought out an envelope. I would really love to trust you, Laura. But all this is driving me crazy. Fine, I understand the cause. But how do you explain this? He said calmly and emptied the envelope's content on the bed. When Laura saw what was lying on the bed, her legs gave way, and she fell. The envelope contained pictures of Laura and Charles in a hotel room. The dates on the pictures showed that they were taken a week before Tony and Laura's wedding. What do you have to say? Just tell me the truth, and I will forgive you. I love you so much, Laura, regardless of anything. Tony said in a calm tone while in tears. Laura explained that she had indeed met up with Charles a week before their wedding. He had threatened to take her life if she refused to see him. They met at the bar in the hotel. But Charles complained that he was feeling suddenly dizzy and needed to rest. So Laura went with him. Truth is, a part of Laura also felt guilty for leaving Charles. She had thought he was her soul mate until she met Tony. I also went there to apologize to Charles for hurting him. I left him for you, and I was feeling guilty about that. Trust me, nothing happened. I swear on my life. I'm sorry I kept it away from you. I should have told you. Mia is yours. Nothing happened between Charles and I, Laura wept. Tony was in a fix. Charles had even dared him to take a DNA test. And here was Laura claiming Mia was his. Regardless of all this, Tony couldn't bear to see Laura cry. So he moved closer to her and hugged her. Then he asked her to stop crying. And told her that everything would be okay. But things weren't really okay. The couple became a bit distant from each other. Tony was unwilling to take the test. But he knew that it was the only way to solve this situation that was about to break his marriage. So he went ahead with it. While waiting for the DNA results, Tony still tried his best to be a loving husband. He assured Laura that he loved her regardless of the outcome. As for Laura, she would constantly beat herself up for hiding crucial information from her husband. A week later, the couple was watching TV when Tony's phone suddenly beeped. It was an email. As soon as Tony read it, his phone fell out of his hands. And tears dripped down his eyes. Laura didn't even bother to ask him. What the email was about, she knew what it contained. So she ran straight to Tony. Pulled him into her arms. And the two kissed like it was their first kiss. They put a lot of passion into the kiss. Tony felt bad that a part of him doubted his wife. But with all that evidence. Who wouldn't? As for Laura. She felt that none of this would have happened. If she hadn't kept the incident about seeing Charles. And their recent communication away from Tony. A day after the DNA confirmed Mia was Tony's daughter. Laura went to the supermarket to get some groceries. She was away for about an hour. And that was when Tony did something. Quite surprising with his daughter. Laura had recently installed cameras all over the house. To monitor Mia's movement since she was a hyperactive toddler. Laura didn't check the camera until she was in bed at night. Tony was sleeping beside her. And since she wasn't sleepy yet. She decided to watch the camera to see what Tony and Mia were up to when she was outdoors. The plan was to get a good laugh and go to bed. Little did she know she would be in tears, when Laura turned on the camera and pressed play. She heard Mia crying loudly. Then she saw Tony get up from the couch, in the living room and go into Mia's bedroom. She heard him singing to her. But the girl continued to cry. A few minutes later, the camera showed Tony walking back into the living room with Mia in his arms. He played some music and put Mia on the floor. Then he went to turn on the music. When the music came on, Tony began to dance. Seeing that all his attempts to get 
His daughter to stop crying had failed. He decided to do something creative and funny just. To get his daughter in a good mood. First, Mia just stared at her dad. But his dance moves were so funny that Mia, who had been crying, began to laugh. But it was what the toddler did next that moved Laura to tears. Mia also began to copy her dad's moves. And soon father and daughter were dancing, hugging each other, and laughing. It was such a beautiful and emotional sight. That Laura couldn't hold back her tears. She saw how much Tony loved Mia. And it would have shattered him if it turned out. That she wasn't his biological daughter. But despite that. She knew he would have still loved her the same. After watching the video. Laura moved closer to Tony and kissed him. Thank you for being patient and kind. Mia and I love you so much. You're a good man, she said. Perhaps Tony heard her in his sleep. Because he faced her and whispered. I love you more, before snoring again. Later that week. The couple got a restraining order from court. Demanding that Charles stay away from them. This just goes to show that love conquers all. After Stefan's wife Nora passed away. He faced the daunting challenge. Of single-handedly raising their three boys. However, six years later, he discovered something extremely shocking. Stefan was an efficient hotelier. Who left a lasting good impression on customers. He met Nora when she came to the hotel he worked at. For her best friend's birthday dinner party. Stefan was also invited to the party. From the moment he saw Nora dancing to the music. He was captivated by her beauty and charisma. Although she wasn't a celebrant. Nora was the center of attraction. Many men wanted to have a dance with her. But she walked up to Stefan and asked for a dance. Stefan couldn't believe his lucky stars. And he went all out to impress her with his dancing skills. After they were done dancing. Stefan excused himself to attend some work-related stuff. And by the time he returned to the ballroom. Nora was gone. Stefan was so disappointed he wished he had asked. For her number when his gods had told him to. For the rest of the night. He was restless and gloomy. Two days later. Something unexpected happened. Stefan got a text from Nora on WhatsApp. She had somehow gotten a hold of his number. Their friendship kicked off right away. And they began visiting each other frequently. But Stefan never told Nora how he felt about her. One day, about two months after they first met. Nora went to visit Stefan. As they watched the heart-wrenching romance on TV. Nora broke down in tears and shared with Stefan the pain. She felt from being abandoned by people she deeply cared about. Including her dad, as she had lost her mother at an early age. Without thinking, Stefan pulled Nora into his arms and whispered. I will never leave you, Nora. I love you dearly. Nora admitted that she was into him too. And they began dating shortly after. Six months later. The couple discovered that they were expecting a baby. Overwhelmed with happiness. They promptly tied the knot. Opting for a simple wedding ceremony. As soon as the scan revealed that they were expecting triplets. The couple immersed themselves in meticulous preparations. To ensure that their children wouldn't lack anything. In due time, Nora gave birth to three healthy boys. Jake, John, and Joe, all of whom were incredibly adorable. The couple was overwhelmed with love for their sons. And did everything to make them comfortable. Everything was going smoothly. And it felt like nothing could go wrong. But then tragedy struck. One morning, Nora went out to do some shopping. While she was trying to cross the road. A car rammed into her, and she died instantly. When a police officer broke. The terrible news to Stefan, he passed out. He wept for days on end, and if it weren't for his kids. He would probably have ended it all. Because he really didn't think he could live happily without Nora. 
following the funeral rites. Stefan became a shadow of his former self. One moment, he had a perfect family. A loving wife and three adorable kids, and then the next. He was a single father. Still, he promised to do whatever it took to give his kids a beautiful life and raise them into responsible young men. Just like Nora would have wanted. It was an arduous task for Stefan as he had to juggle multiple responsibilities at once. He had to change the diapers, feed the children, and lull them to sleep. All while managing all the household chores. On top of these duties, he still had to manage the hotel, which left him feeling constantly stressed. Thankfully, Stefan had a kind and compassionate middle-aged neighbor who was always willing to lend a helping hand. As the boys grew up, they developed a deep love for their father. Stefan was highly attentive to his children, constantly making time for them. He relished any opportunity to spend time with them. He would take them to amusement parks, play indoor games with them, and help with their school projects. He dedicated all of his free time to ensuring the well-being of his children, choosing not to date or hang out with his buddies frequently. Each year on Nora's death anniversary, Stefan would take the triplets to her gravesite. During these visits, he would share stories about their mother and tell them how much she loved them. On the sixth anniversary of her death, Stefan visited her gravesite as usual with the children, but was surprised to find an unexpected visitor there. It was an older man in his fifties whom Stefan had never seen before. The older man was in tears, but he wiped him away when he saw Stefan, introducing himself as Fred. The man handed Stefan his business card and revealed, that he was the chairman of a multi-million dollar corporation. Stefan wondered how such a wealthy and powerful individual knew Nora, and why she had never mentioned him before. Unable to contain his curiosity, he asked Fred who Nora was to him. Fred told him that they were quite close and listed details about her that only someone close to her would know. Despite Fred's convincing words, Stefan still had doubts. He couldn't help but wonder why it had taken Fred so long to show up after Nora's death, especially if he was as close to her as he claimed to be. Fred said they lost communication for a long time, but he recently ran into Nora's friend Leah, who told him about Nora's death and where he could find her gravesite. Hence, he came to pay his last respects. Still, Stefan felt Fred wasn't telling him the whole truth. It didn't bother hiding his feelings and told Fred. It was best if he stayed away from him, his kids, and Nora afterward. He helped his kids into the car and zoomed off. The next morning, Stefan got the shock of his life when someone ran to his door. And it turned out to be Fred. What do you want? And how do you know where I live? Stefan screamed. Fred then told him that he had something quite important to tell him. Stefan was reluctant to let him in. But when Fred said it had to do with Nora, he did. After listening to what Fred had to say, Stefan felt as if his entire world had been turned upside down. You're saying that you're Nora's dad, but, how, he stuttered. Fred then went ahead to tell Stefan, all about his relationship with his daughter. Nora was his only child. And he denied her nothing because he loved her so much. However, Nora became rebellious and started living waywardly. Indulging in heavy drinking, partying. And getting into bad relationships. On many occasions, Fred tried to make Nora see. How her bad decisions could destroy her life. He also warned her that he would cut off her financial support if she didn't change for the better. Despite his warning, Nora refused to listen. And Fred followed through with his threat. Afterwards, Nora left home. While Fred held on to the hope that she would return someday. Unfortunately, Nora never returned. And Fred only learned of her death and the fact. 
that she had left behind a husband and three sons when he ran into Leah. Stefan was so sorry to hear this. He wanted to comfort Fred. But the older man told him there was something else he needed to know. I am ashamed to tell you this. But it's only right that you should know, Fred shared. Nora wasn't faithful to you. I hope to God that my hunch is wrong. Because you're a wonderful person. But you need to conduct a DNA test with the triplets. Leah told me that she was involved with another man. As soon as Fred was done talking, Stefan went into a rage. Claiming that Fred was lying and that Nora would never cheat on him, he even chased Fred out of the house. But the older man didn't take offense and returned a few days later. He had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Stefan and was able to convince him to take the DNA test. The day the results came out, Stefan drove to Nora's grave with the triplets. And there he broke down in tears. Why, he kept asking over and over. He had believed that he knew Nora well. But six years after her death, he found out he wasn't the father of their kids. Why did she cheat? Why did she lie to him and pass off? Another man's children as if they were his own. He wondered sadly. He would never find answers to these questions. Despite the hurt and agony he felt. Stefan couldn't bring himself to give up the boys. Whom he considered his sons. He had grown to love and care for them deeply. And their unwavering trust in him. Made it impossible for him to let them go. Fred, who saw how much Stefan cared for the boys. Was scared that he might hurt himself if the boys were taken from him. Luckily, it later turned out that the kid's biological father wasn't interested in raising them. Fred was very proud of Stefan, and he gifted him and the kids a beautiful mansion where they could all live happily. Stefan loved the boys wholeheartedly, and not even for a single day did he make them pay for their mother's wrongdoing.